Hi, my name is Alicia Carruthers and today we'll be looking at some important geometry topics including alternate interior angles, exterior angles of a polygon, and the Pythagorean theorem. Parallel lines are lines in the same plane that never intersect. Some examples of parallel lines would be opposite sides of a train track, the opposite sides of a picture frame, or the two prongs on a plug. When two lines, parallel or non-parallel, are intersected by a transversal, they form special types of angles. A transversal is a line that crosses two lines at two different points. Let's look at the special types of angles formed by a transversal and two lines. Okay, let's go ahead and mark the transversal. And then the first angle that we're going to talk about will be alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles lie between the two lines on opposite sides of the transversal. So in this drawing, angles 1 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles. Can you see any other sets of alternate interior angles? If you said angle 8 and angle 6, you're correct. The second type are called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are angles that lie in the same position on the lines. Angles 1 and angle 3 are corresponding angles. There are several se other sets of corresponding angles, including angles 8 and angles 5, and angles 2 and angles 4. What is the other set of corresponding angles? If you said 6 and 7, you're correct. Alternate exterior angles lie outside the lines on opposite sides of the transversal. Angles 3 and angle 4 are alternate exterior angles. Also, angle 7 and angle 5. And the last type of angles formed by parallel lines and transversals are vertical angles. Vertical angles are formed by two intersecting lines. Two pairs of vertical angles are formed when the lines intersect. The vertical angles are directly across from each other. So in this diagram, angles 1 and 4 are vertical angles. Also, angles 3 and angle 2. Angles 7 and 8 and 5 and 6 are also vertical angles. When forming an exterior angle from the extension of one side, make sure that you do not cross any lines. An exterior angle goes from one side to the extended side. It does not cross any line. So this is not an exterior angle. Today we're going to focus on alternate interior angles. There are many theorems and postulates associated with alternate interior angles and parallel lines. The first postulate states that if line 1 and line 2 are parallel lines and are cut by a transversal, then angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent or their measures are equal. If two non-parallel lines are cut by a transversal, and the alternate, then you find that the alternate interior angles are not congruent. So remember, the postulate is only true if the lines are parallel. The converse of a postulate means the reverse. If two lines are cut by a transversal and the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Let's look at an example using this postulate. Given that line 1 is parallel to line 2, the measure of angle 1 is 102 degrees and the measure of angle 3 is 78 degrees, find the measure of angle 2. Given that line 1 is parallel to line 2 and angle 1 is equal to 102 degrees and angle 3 is equal to 78 degrees. Find the measure of angle 2. We know that angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary which means they add up to 180 degrees. We also know that angles 1 and 2 are alternate interior angles which means they are congruent. Therefore the measure of angle 2 is also 102 degrees. Let's look at a second example. Since we know that angles 1 plus angle 2 and angle 3 are alternate interior angles, we know they are congruent. We are also given 
that angle 3 is 65 degrees and angle 2 is 25 degrees. So find the measure of angle 1. Since we know they are congruent or equal, we could say measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 is equal to measure of angle 3. Or measure of angle 1 plus 25 is equal to 65. We subtract 25 from both sides. And we get measure of angle 1 is equal to 40 degrees. Now, moving on to polygons. The word polygon comes from the Latin polys, meaning many, and gonum, meaning figure of angles. Thus, we can derive that the word polygon means a figure of many angles. There are many different types of polygons. They all have the following properties. Each segment interse intersects exactly two other segments, one at each endpoint. No two segments with a common endpoint are collinear or on the same line. They are closed. They divide the plane into two distinct regions, one inside and the other outside the polygon. A convex polygon is a polygon in which no line containing a side of the polygon contains a point in the interior of the polygon. An exterior angle of a polygon is formed by one side of the polygon and the extension of the adjacent side. Let's look at how to form an exterior angle for a polygon. An exterior angle is formed by extending the side of a polygon. For example, in this triangle, this is the exterior angle. The endpoints of the angle are the two sides. So this would be an endpoint, and this is an endpoint. You can also form an exterior angle here and here. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles of any convex polygon is 360 degrees. It does not matter what shape the polygon is as long as it is convex. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles will always be 360 degrees. A polygon is regular if all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. If a polygon is regular, you can find the measure of each exterior angle by dividing 360 by the number of sides. For example, in the pentagon, it has five sides, so we will do 360 divided by five, or 72 degrees for the measure of each exterior angle. If a polygon is not regular, we can still find the measure of an exterior angle. Let's look at this polygon, which is not regular. In the triangle, we're given that measure of angle BAC is 35 degrees, and angle ABC is 90 degrees, which makes this a right triangle. We want to find the measure of angle BAD. We know that BAD and BAC are supplementary, or they add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, we can say that measure of angle BAD plus 35 equals 180. If we subtract 35 from both sides, we get measure of BAD equals 145 degrees. Also in a right triangle, if you're given the length of two of the sides, you can find the length of the third side using one of the most famous theorems in geometry, the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that in a right triangle, the sum of the square of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the hypotenuse squared, or more commonly, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and B represent the legs of the triangle, and C represents the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. Let's look at a problem using the Pythagorean theorem. We're looking for the length of the missing side, or B. You can see that you're given the hypotenuse and one leg. So substituting this into A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we get 5 squared plus B squared equals 9 squared. Simplifying, we get 25 plus b squared equals 81. And subtracting 25 from both sides, we get b squared equals 56. We take the square root of both sides and get b is equal to square root of 56, which simplifies into square root of 4 times 14, or 2 square root of 14. You can also find the decimal approximation by taking the square root of 56 on your calculator, which is approximately 7.48.
Now let's look at a real life example using the Pythagorean theorem. A construction company is building a new playground at a school. The end of the slide for the playground is to be placed 40 feet from the building. If the stairs for the slide are 6 feet tall and the length of the slide is 10 feet, how far should the slide be placed from the building? If you think about the shape of a slide, you can see that it forms a right triangle. The stairs form one leg, the ground from the stairs to the end of the slide form another leg, and the slide forms the hypotenuse. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine how far the stairs need to be placed from the school. If we set up this equation, we see that we're given the length of one of the legs and the hypotenuse. So we have 6 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. Simplifying, we get 36 plus x squared equals 100. If we subtract 36 from both sides, we get x squared equals 64. And finally, we take the square root and we get x equals 8. So we can see that the stairs are 8 feet from the bottom of the slide. And we also know that the slide should be 40 feet from the school. That gives us a total of 48 feet that the stairs should be placed from the school. Today we talked about alternate interior angles, exterior angles of polygons, and the Pythagorean theorem.